Welcome to September's Leet Code Challenge. Today's problem is reverse linked list. Given the head of a singly linked list, reverse the list and return the reversed list. So we have a linked list. Now normally if we had just a list, we could just reverse it and return it, but uh, you can certainly output this into an array and then rebuild the list. But let's try to do this in O of one space. Uh, they give us a follow-up to do it either iteratively or recursively. So let's start with the iterative approach. What we're going to do is say that we had a linked list like very simple one. The last one's going to point to none here, right? Essentially, we're going to have two pointers, one pointing to the previous node and one pointing to the current node. What we'll do is take this current node. Actually, we'll first store the next node somewhere in some temporary place. And we are going to take this current node point it to the one previous. So now one is going to be pointing to none and then move our current pointer up to the temp and move the previous pointer up to the current and just continue that algorithm up until the end. Once we hit our current pointer is now going to be pointing to none. So after that, we can just return the previous pointer and that's going to be the new head of our reversed list. So we have two pointers, right? We have to store the previous, which is going to be none and the current, which is going to be the head. So while current, let's first store the current pointer's next node somewhere temporarily. This will be current next. We are now going to point our current.next to the previous node. And we are going to move our previous node to now equal current. And we're going to have our current now equaling the temp. This was the next node, but we stored it somewhere temporarily, right? Once we finished this loop, we can return previous because the current node will now be pointing to none and the previous one should be pointing to the new head. So let's see if that works. Looks like it is. And there we go. So this is O of n time complexity and O of one space. Now they did tell us, can you do it recursively as well? This problem is kind of interesting because the recursive solution is actually a little bit harder to get to than the iterative which is usually not the case, but let's try to use the same idea. What we're going to do is write a recursive function, call it recur recursive, and we're going to pass in the previous and the current, same, same as we did before. But since we're doing a recursion here, what we want to return is the tail node, right? And that's, that's the part that's kind of hard. Um, what we'll do is say, look, if not current, um, then we want to return the previous because remember the current previous one's pointing to the to the one before and we are going to return here the tail with our recursion we'll say pass in current and current on next and this tail is going to be kind of like stored as we move it up because that's the thing we want to return so we can return the tail at the very end all we have to do now then is take our current dot next and make it equal to previous now, what about, you know, what we did before in the iterative where we had to store that temp variable? But, well, luckily this recursion will store it in the stack. So we don't actually need to worry about that. So all we need to do then is return our recursion with previous being none and the head being the current. So let's make sure this works here. Okay, it looks like it's working. And there we go. So this is... Uh, the same O of n and I'm not entirely sure if this is O1 space because of the recursive stack. I actually don't think it counts as O1. This might be O of n space as well. So I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the iterative ap approach is much better. So <laughs> this is just kind of uh, for exercise. Okay. Thanks for watching my channel. Uh, remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.